that temple rock. It was an immense amount of sand. And, uh, and there was this young uh, uh, pastor, Tito Lewis, and this other pastor, people from Chicago. And, and I was just like fired up. All oh, this, this, this whole thing. Like, you know, I was so glad to see this young guy came because he was speaking about the generations. And just recently, I was over the I would say since the beginning of the year, really. You know, um, just how important the next generations are. Now, there are so many churches that don't have men's ministries and women's ministries and children's ministries. Our son's one of the, he's the director of the, the New Jersey Network's children's uh, ministry. So, yeah, so, you know, those all these churches try to help people start ministries and so on and so forth. But it's so important. Let's not ever think the next generation is going to get it by osmosis. That's right. And see, the generations in the past, they did get it by example. But these next generations need more than that. Yes. They need more than that. Hey, Sue, come here for one minute. I didn't plan this. Come on, son. Please. Come around. This is one of my spiritual sons, okay, first of all. Uh, when he first got saved, I discipled him. He was 19, 18. He just got out of high school, right? 18 years old. And now he's our youth leader here, one of our youth directors here. But God has shown me this thing about generational gaps. Mm. And I'm not preaching on this today, but man, David, when you said that thing about saying that yes, this conversation we had. Actually, today at Calvary, our son, Pastor Matt and Pastor Jordan, which are three of the pastors that are over there, there's a fourth one, uh, Pastor Dan, but they're preaching a message on generational gaps. And he just told us all last night, he, this thing's been stirring in me, but it's our job to fill the gap. Mm. And you know what that gap is? Our godly appointed position, gap. Mm. So we can fill it. And I just felt like, I was talking to my son, he was sharing some stuff with us, and you just give me your hand for one second. See, generations in the past, see, I have told or shared with Junior how to be a man of God, a Christian man of God. But these next generations, they need us to take their hand Amen. and show them what it is to worship. Come on. Show them what it is to Come pray. On. Power in it. 
It might inspire us, maybe even get us excited, but it will not do anything else. Only your word will transform us. Only your word will empower us and help us. So we commit this message to you. In your name, amen. amen. When we read Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, again, this is Jesus going back to his hometown. This is after he's out ministering and he's finally thinking, okay, I gotta go back now and make sure my family gets saved. Anybody want that? Make sure your family gets saved. Right? Amen. So this is what he's doing. This is again Mark chapter 6, 1 through 6. Jesus left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. The next Sabbath he began teaching in the synagogue. And many who heard him were amazed. They asked, where did he get this wisdom and power to perform such miracles? Then they stopped. He's just a carpenter. The son of Mary and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon. And his sisters went right here among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, <coughs> excuse me, allergies, just so you know, it's not a cold. It ain't the C word. God <laughs> bless, Pastor. <laughs> then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his hometown and among his relatives and his own family. Not true with that. And because of their own belief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except to place hands on a few sick people and heal them. And then he was amazed at their unbelief. Then Jesus went from village to village teaching the people. You see, we read he went to his hometown because he cared about his family. He wanted to go where he grew up and the people he knew and the people he cared about. <clears throat> he wanted to share the gospel, share this message of salvation. He wanted to perform miracles. Imagine you want to go somewhere and perform miracles and do something and people don't let you. Mm. If we keep reading some scriptures in, if we, in other areas, it shares that he performed most of his miracles in Chorazin and Bethsaida. And that's where the least amount of people got saved. Because see, a lot of time, we only want what Jesus has to offer, not what he has to give us for eternity. Because we're always focused on what's going on down here. Mm. I shared a couple of weeks ago. We can see five seconds of hell. Just five. One, two, I'll make it three. One, two, three. There'd be enough screaming in that three seconds and pain and anguish and grinding of teeth that'll be like, I want you to go to heaven. Mm. And remember, he was a carpenter. Okay? So, as a carpenter, his dad, the only son, would take on the dad's trade. So, he probably did work for these people. He was probably in their home or around that village area in certain areas doing work. So, they all knew him. That's what we read. This is, this is, this is the, the carpenter's uh, sons and his mother and his brother. We know Joseph and Judah. We know them. And the sisters went right here. They knew him. So, we think sometimes the people that know us know us. Not if they're not saved. Because see, you change when you get saved. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> You're no longer cursing and drinking and nasty and listening to dirty jokes and all this stuff. And when you change, and when that stuff ain't funny no more, then you become funny. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. when, I, when I first got saved, I know I shared this with our congregation before, so. People thought I was scamming to become a pastor or a minister. They were like, ah, oh, because back in the day, you know, I'm mean, probably doing this to make money. You know, you know, Johnny O. He's mm. probably doing this to make money. Mm -hmm. No. That only did their things. Mm -hmm. Listen, Jesus was, was not even accepted in the place with the people he knew the most. The ones that he probably loved the most, who cared about the most. All he wanted to do was impart some wisdom. He didn't want to impart some good stuff to somebody. Yeah. But they just don't want it. Yeah. But then you meet some stranger in the supermarket, maybe, mm. and God speaks to your heart, and you're, next thing you know, you're praying for them, they're crying. Yeah. <laughs> I want to read these two verses again, Mark 6, 2, 3. Again, the next Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue. And many who heard him, listen, they were amazed. They asked, where did he get all this? Listen, now they can't recognize what was going on. Where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? I love the next verse. Then they scoffed at him. He's just a carpenter. 
basically a nobody. The son of Mary and brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, and his sisters live right here among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. And you know why? And we don't read these in scriptures, but we can give a strong assumption. Because he started talking about sin. Hmm. See, we can get saved. We're these bubbly, energetic now, hopefully, and excited and loving and caring. And I'll do anything for my brother and sister. But as soon as you start talking about sin, mm, 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 mm. I don't really want that. But see, now you got to identify. you got to take a look at your own heart your own mind. And this is probably what happened. We don't read it, but I'm telling you, how do they go from a Wow. 
our house for a couple of years. Like, what? I'll bet you even some Christian family was like, hmm, Papi, Mommy, you sure you want to do this? <laughs> like, you guys ate great chickens. But they knew. They knew that salvation mattered and souls mattered. When we get born again, we receive Jesus and He's changing our hearts. And we're never too old to do something. That's right. Never. That's right. We started this church, I was 50. I was thinking by the time I was 50, I'd be retired or prison or dead. <laughs> Thank God I got option four. <laughs> Called us to share the salvation, to receive with them to share it, so that others could come to know him. Listen, Mark 3 31 and 35. Listen. Then Jesus' mother's brothers arrived standing outside. They sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and your brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? He asked. Then he looked at those sitting seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mothers and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. See, people don't understand. And I'll tell you something too about Christians. You suppose you're a Christian, you're saying you are going to heaven? That don't mean you're in the will of God. Mm, come on. Don't get it twisted. Preach. I'm pretty sure God's calling a lot of people to do a lot of crazy things. And we just decided to be a little mellow with it. They say local, Yep. Don't be local. <laughs> so we can be Christians, but not be in the will of God. Yeah. Pastor Lane gave me a time signal. This is still a picture of like 50 minutes in this week. I'm blocking you out right now. <laughs> I wrote this because I was thinking about this. This week, listen, listen. We can either get in the will of God or get in the way of God's will. That's mm-hmm. good. We got that slide on? Is that, is that a slide or not? We put the quote up there? Is that up there? Maybe not. Listen, we need either get in the will of God or get in the way of God's will. Oh, we did put it up there. Like, that's reality. And it doesn't matter how young or old we are. Our daughter was called to missions at 11 years old. Hmm. You were teasing little Adriana went to Washington, D.C. this weekend. You know, it's the first time she's so far away. You know, her grandparents overnight, so they were all concerned about it or whatever. I remember our daughter going to uh, New Mexico. That was the first mission trip. They were going to the Indian Reservation. And she's like, I'm going to go in for a weekend. We're going to raise $1,200. I was like, first of all, $1,200, and you go going in for a weekend. Because <laughs> that's how we think when you're not in the world of God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And see, we almost got in the way of God's will for yeah. our child. Yeah. Parents, be careful. Yeah. Don't get in the way of God's will for your kids. Listen, if they come to you with something crazy, it's probably Jesus. <laughs> that's that's the thing. That's the thing. If they come to you with something, you're just like, are you out of your mind? Yes, Mom, Jesus told me. Yes, Dad. That's what it is. You get born again, you get crazy. There's an old Toby Mac song, Jesus for you. That's what happens. And you know why we gotta get crazy? Because this world's crazy. And we have to be spiritually, not crazy, okay? But spiritually out of our minds so that we can help others get in the right mind. That's good. That's good. That's the real house families don't do. And you might think they're going to some gorgeous place, and they actually are. I have to give up a brother up when you need some more. Yeah. <laughs> I just say I love the beach. It's so That's why I really can't go to the beach. Hey, that brother's going to last. I'm going to let you go, brother. Well, good, but I'll try it. I'm going to feed you, like me too. <laughs> Slow keeping his promise, which means coming back to get us. 
as some understand slowness. Instead, he's patient with you. Not waiting, not wanting any one to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Because salvation matters. Souls matter. Yeah. Even though we can't see it with somebody we've been praying for, or maybe someone we're talking to, maybe it's a family member that, man, for 10 years you've been praying, they want nothing to do with God. I'm telling you, let something happen to them, and you'll see how fast they want to know God. And I wasn't going to share this story. I had a question mark next to it. But Tony shared something with me today that he did to a step in faith to, to reconcile something. And I know i got to share this story. And I'm putting myself on big blast right now. Okay? This is about my uncle Joe. Okay? Just to tell you who he was, he was a bookie. You know what that is? That's someone that runs illegal games. Well, people more going, yeah, we know, bro. <laughs> Oh, that's my followers then. So, 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 and I worked with him, collecting money and so on. You guys all know my path. I gotta go into that. And one time I did something really stupid with the money, and I went to him and he slapped me. And I mean, he didn't just like slap me, he slapped me like almost knocked a tooth out. Cut my ear and lip, I was bleeding. And I, was, I, was, I was only 16. This is when I first started really getting involved. You know, major, lots of major crime stuff. And I hated that guy. I'm telling you, when I say hate, hate. I wasn't a Christian then, but I'll fast forward 30 years, and, and he's probably in his 80s or so at the time now, and he's dying of cancer, and I'm a Christian. I'm actually a minister in the assemblies, going out, preaching, teaching. My parents were over our house for dinner one night. Kids are there. And, you know, we're, we're Christian people now. I'm a minister. I'm preaching. I'm teaching. I might even been licensed to go to at this time. And my father goes, you know, he knew, like, you know, I really, you know, I wasn't really cool, my uncle, whatever. He's like, you know, your, your uncle, like, almost, you know, he's dying. He's like, I've got a couple weeks to live. You know what I said? I guess I'll go pray with him. I was like, good. He should die and go to hell. Mm-hmm. My wife, if you, you could hear her fork hit the plate, it was like, <laughs> she's like, what did you just say? And I was just like, hey, whatever, man. You know, <laughs> Obviously, God beat the crap out of me that night. The next day, we went to go see him. He was living on his deathbed. You know, stage four cancer, he was alive. So I go in, we're like, hey, good job. And I'm like all hesitant. Pastor Lane's like, hey, I'm the only bubbly self, right? And I'm just like, hey, Uncle Joe. And he was like, Johnny. I was like, hey. We just started praying for him. The whole room atmosphere changed. There was a guy in the bed next to me. We started praying and talking about Jesus. I said, Uncle Joe, you know, there's two different places you go when you die. And I'm not going to tell you, this. In all my life, I've met tens of thousands of people. Okay? That's the important international. I've met so many people I can't say. This guy was the nastiest, meanest, selfish. I mean, everything you could think of, it was this guy. Cold-hearted. I mean, it's the lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Lifestyle is living. It's like, it's ugly. And we started talking about Jesus. I said, Uncle Joe, you know, if you die, you go to hell, you'll be in you know, torment forever. I said, but if you accept Jesus Christ right now, he's, if we got in room, it's cold. Mm. And I started getting warm, right? Maybe the Spirit of God was just hovering over his stuff. And my uncle started crying. I never saw this guy cry at his little brother's funeral who got shot and killed, his father's funeral, my grand, his, my grand, my, his mother's funeral. Show emotion ever. He was like a rock with a face. Mm. That's how stone cold this guy was. And he accepted Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. And the guy was there next to him Jesus. And so a nurse came down, Charlene, and she was a backslider, and Pastor Lee's on a minister, she rededicated her life. Wow. There was some security over there about 9 o'clock. Some guard walked by. He was like, come on, get out. He Careful what's in your heart. Someone just might miss Jesus. Because it's in our hearts. 
No matter who pastor, minister, I do stuff at church, that don't mean nothing. Sometimes something can be in there this big, but it bucks an artery in this big. I preach. See, it blocks the artery, it's only that big. That love artery, that soul matter artery, that salvation artery. Three points, real quick. Okay? Here's the next one. Never stop praying. First one, I'm sorry. Never stop praying. Acts 26. To open their eyes and they may turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. Then they will receive forgiveness for their sins and be given a place among God's people who are set apart by faith in me. Never stop praying. Pastor Lance David prayed for us for 20 years to get saved. Never stop praying. Never stop asking God to use us. Because salvation matters. Souls matters. Amen. The real family knows souls matter. They're leaving it all behind to go. So people can get saved. Don't kid yourself. People on the island of Samoa may not listen to their own relatives and people. But you let some Americanos or Latinos come over there and they just might listen. You ever had that? Don't make me that. My wife will tell me something 40 times. Don't tell me something once. Don't tell me something once. Right now. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Yeah. Wow. 
preach. I've been growing for 20 years. I know, but you should have been a little further, son. Stop judging. Mm-hmm. Right. Keep your eyes on the cross. That's you right. Lost. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Here's the last thing. Listen, take action. We must do something. We're here today celebrating it. Mark 16, 15. Then he told them, and I'll just add, the real families. Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. And that goes for us too here in Fairfield or wherever we live or wherever we work. Go and preach the good news. Yeah. Yeah. Tell people about Jesus. They may not want it. That's okay. Yep. Just keep telling people. Yes. Jesus' his own family didn't want it. The people in his town didn't want it. The ones who performed the most miracles with him cast out demons with people want it. Mm-hmm. Did that stop him? No. No. Romans 1 6. For I'm not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It's the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. The Jew first and also the Gentile. Yes. See, we live in America, and unfortunately, they're trying to shame us for being Christians. Yeah. So you can be an adulterer, you can be some cross dressing knucklehead at some library reading stuff for children. You can think you're a man and you're a woman or you're a woman and think you're a man or you can just think it's okay to have a woman as a wife or two men. They're, they're trying to shame. You know why they're trying to shame me? Because they're shaming God. They're in sin. They may not proclaim it, you know, publicly, but inside it doesn't work. Inside it doesn't work. You know why you hear these stories of people who used to be gay and they're straight now or transgenders and some people have, have operations and they change and all of a sudden they got up because something inside of us is created by God. It cannot be changed. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 You, you can't uncreate your creator yes. by wearing a wig and some high heels Amen. or some work boots and a jacket. You, you can't unhit, you can't change that. So one time in life, when we keep telling people and keep loving and keep showing and not accepting, but just being there to love and show them about Jesus, it just might change. Are we getting that? This list, and I've shared with us over 4,000 names. And when we first started this, can we just say that again? In the old church, we had sneakers from Sidney Gore and Lenny and Brooklyn sneakers. We used to have these sneakers and we would be called the soul ties. And we would be tied to people's souls in prayer. We changed the name now. The sneakers had so many ribbons on them, but we changed it to, you know, the salvation list. And this is why we do what we do. This is why you become a Christian. You become a Christian first to have a relationship with Jesus Christ and to be accepted to heaven when we leave from this earth. But the next thing, and I would say, just as important. Maybe the salvation is here, but the next thing is right here. I'm sharing. This love, salvation message. So that someone else can come to know Christ. Mm-hmm. It's not for us. And we're going to close with this. This is uh, uh, the good part of the story with Jesus' family is a lot of them came to know him. We know him. when he's on the cross, Mary comes and she was already walking with them and, and, and the disciples because she came to know Christ. But if you don't know, the book of James is Jesus' half-brother. That's who wrote the book of James. He was not only he not only the book of James, but he was the leader of the churches throughout Jerusalem. This guy was like a, a powerful, like a, like a bishop almost, you know, a, a pope type almost, throughout all the churches. And then he, and throughout the region around Jerusalem. And the book of Jude is Judas. That's Jesus' other head, brother. His family gets saved. Okay? His family gets saved. They rejected him like they reject us sometimes, maybe. But let us never lose faith. Let us never lose hope. You keep loving and not judging and just keep trusting God. Let him do the work. Our family just might get saved. My son shared, he's sharing today, he told us a little bit of his message, and I was sharing how, how I got saved first, and then my wife got saved, and my kids weren't born into a home, man, a home. My kids weren't born into a Christian home. 
But I didn't think about it. He goes, but it's my love was his son. You used to send that. Little baby was born to a Christian home. Little Lucas and Jerry were born to a Christian home. The next generation. They're important. Salvation is important. I wrote this years ago. Put that up there, little Ramon, in the back room. This is how Jesus thinks about souls. See, because this, this is how important they are to him. That he saved others under love's sacrifice. See, he died on the cross so people can get saved. We don't look at it like that. And that, years ago, I don't know years ago I wrote this, but I actually remember when I was like, oh man, I'm going to have an acronym for souls. Yeah, I've been very But I was like, oh yeah, that's right. And this should be our heart set, our mindset before I pray. And read one more verse, but, but that souls would matter. Salvation would matter. And they can get saved. We, 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 can, we can make sure others are saved under this love sacrifice that we were saved. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. We're going to take it with us and make sure we, 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 we live this out. And this is, this is the result. Oh, I love this. Jude 1, uh, 23. Save others by snatching them from the fire. Mm-hmm. To others show mercy mixed with fear. Hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. And basically what Jesus' brother's writing here is that it's our job not to get caught up in sin trying to help someone as a sinner, but to be sure we snatch them from the fire we're heading into. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for this word this morning. We pray for your power. We pray for your spirit. We pray for uh, your, your, your empowerments, your anointings, and your callings to rise up within us, Lord. That we would want uh, uh, souls and salvation to be just as important to us as it is to you, Lord, for us. I pray that you would guide our hearts and guide our minds as we continue to navigate this life. <laughs> Even if it's today and later on, Father God, that we would speak to somebody and share with somebody, Lord. We wouldn't be too busy for a lost soul. Rise up within us, Holy Spirit. And we love you and we praise you. In your name, amen. amen. I bless you, everybody. Let's take a time of some fellowship now. Uh, and um, just enjoy some, some company. Introduce yourself to somebody who needs someone. Give a hand.